Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. Coming up, a random knife giveaway on Thursday Night Knives this week. Uh, knife Rights starts their ultimate steal uh, fundraiser, and then we take a look at knives that should be in the movies. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Lone Wolf. He said, shouldn't the Kaiser Aggressor be an eight plus inch sub hilt fighter? Talk amongst yourselves. A knife like this. I agree. I've mentioned this before. Uh, Kaiser has <clears throat> one knife called the Assassin, which is a, a very nice looking, small, discreet EDC uh, folding blade. And this one, uh, the new one, the Aggressor, it's a quite a nice looking uh, front flipper, is also kind of not very assassiny or uh, aggressive. Uh, it is also a three inch blade. And, and it got me thinking, like, why go out of your way to name these little EDC knives, um, re, you know, potentially incriminating names. Uh, and then I realized after doing a little bit of research that uh, Assassin Knives, the designer of both, of both the Kaiser Assassin and the Aggressor are from Armenian custom knife maker, Arsen Arsenjan. And then it, it clicked. I'm like, okay, it's, it's a little bit different because it's coming from a different language. In our country, we're always worried about getting sued. And if, uh, you know, you're in the courtroom and they're like, and what were you carrying in your pocket? And you're like, oh, the Kaiser assassin. What was that, sir? The Kaiser assassin. The assassin, you say. Uh, so Kaiser aggressor, I do agree, should be an eight plus inch sub hilt fighter. All right. Talk amongst yourselves. Thank you so much, Lone Wolf, for the comments and everyone else out there. We will be talking about the aggressor in Knife Life News as they have a, a, a very nice offering in that blade. Uh, for all to enjoy. All right, all that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. In the front right pocket today was one I haven't carried in a little while, which is the Emerson Tiger. Uh, one of my favorite Emersons uh, for EDC. It's got the amazing handle of the CQC 13. So um, ergonomic and encapsulating with that big bird's beak at the pommel and the deep finger groove up front and a uh, really great finger guard in case you are thrusting forward. Uh, this, this knife, when it first came out, was Ernest Emerson's EDC as well for, for what that's worth. You know, he could carry whatever he makes, right? And uh, this is what he chose. Uh, I really love that clip point blade. It reminds me of a broader version of the CQC-8, the banana blade, and uh, very, very generous wave. will always catch the pocket with, um, with waved knives in general, but especially ones with these big waves like this. Uh, if you don't want to wave it out of your pocket, you better, you better be damn sure to, to cover the blade like this uh, with your, with your finger. Otherwise it will open up even if not on the seam of your pocket, but on the innards of your pocket, you know, the, uh, the inside part anyway, had the, uh, Emerson tiger on me front right pocket. Uh, I had of course a slip joint on me today and it was the new Jack Wolf knives. Um, feel good Jack. Here it is. Uh, I always feel it necessary to open this in front of the mic. So I'm going to do that. Such great walk and talk. This one, especially, they all have great walk and talk. And of course, the more you carry them um, and the more, you know, micro dust and stuff that gets in the pivot, uh, the less crispy it is until you flush it out. Uh, so yes, it is new. So it has incredible walk and talk. But this one in particular, I feel like I say that every month, is especially um, nice. It's got the blue carbon fiber, Arctic, Arctic storm blue carbon fiber, beautiful titanium frame, and just a very, very nice uh, sheep's foot blade. I, I love the acute angle on the tip, uh, more so than on the Midnight Jack, another one that I love uh, with that nice worn cliff on there, or I should say sheep's foot. Let's get some focus there. Come on. There we go. 
Uh, that did not work. Okay, so <laughs> fixed blade on me, of course, as always. Today, it was the Nova One. It's exciting. I was talking to Matt. Of course, he's getting ready for a blade show. And so uh, his the, the production of these uh, has been on hold for the last week as he's been readying the stuff that's going out to Blade Show. But they're coming along nicely. They're all uh, cut out, and, and I believe they're all um, beveled. Uh, a, a process he does by hand. I love this knife. Uh, as you know, I, I have been carrying t Kells recently and kind of put this aside as this was my obsessive uh, kind of 24-7 carry for several months there. And having it back in the waistline now, up front, uh, in the appendix carry in the waistband, I uh, just remember how much I love this, and I'm looking forward to the Nova 2, uh, which will have a different style blade. You can probably imagine what that'll be. Um, okay, and then lastly, for emotional support and clickety-clackety and uh, fidget, was the CJRB Pyrite. I just love this knife. I love it so much. And, and this particular version of it is probably the most vanilla of them all. <clears throat> comes in uh, stainless steel. It comes in uh, different, different uh, covers. And then, of course, all black with the Warncliffe blade. And that Warncliffe on the, on the uh, Pyrite has the perfect forward angle if you ask me. Uh, it, it hovers there right between utility and tactical, and that's that's my favorite. Uh, a friend of mine at work, a non-knife guy, though he has bought an Emerson from me because he's related to the family, uh, bought a Pyrite uh, Warncliffe All Black uh, and showed it off to me because I, I showed him this and he loved it so much. He was looking to get a tactile rock wall and it was just too too much bread, you know? He just is, he's not a knife collector. So I, uh, I, well, what about this pyrite? And he really liked it. And then I showed him the other options and he dug it. Anyway, it feels good. It feels like I'm a, a missionary for the cause. Uh, one, one person at a time getting a nice knife. So there you go. That was uh, my pocket check for today. Let me know what you had in your pocket. Drop it down in the comments below. Okay, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a couple of new releases in the knife world, plus some exciting knife rights uh, news. And then after that, we take a look at move, uh, knives that I think should be in movies. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Boker Knives is re-releasing its uh, popular Accomplice. This is a knife designed by John Gray uh, that was out a few years ago and then <clears throat> was discontinued. Well, it's back. And now it's in D2 as opposed to the old 14C. Uh, this is a, an interesting knife because I'm starting to look at ring knives again as I carry the TKL uh, Night Stalker quite a bit. Uh, these, uh, John Gray, first of all, I love his designs. And uh, this is a pretty cool one in that uh, I like that drop point blade. It is uh, functional and utilitarian looking without being, uh, but it's a little a little funky. And then he's got the ring with the screwdriver uh, on the end of it. Now, I like the utility and I like the concept, uh, but I look at that ring and I think it's, it's really going to mess with the alignment of your fingers. It's just not offset enough from the handle, uh, but I bet it's comfortable to use without the ring. Um, anyway, it, they are re-releasing this. Uh, it is out now. You can carry it on your back, uh, on your belt or neck. And uh, well, I like it because it's a John Gray design that's coming back into, uh, into production. And I, I like it when the knife makers get the mailbox money as Bob Terzuola called it. So uh, it, Good for him. And uh, if you like your EDC uh, fixed blades, 3.25 inches is a great range uh, for a very carryable uh, fixed blade 
knife. You know that uh, when it comes to folders, I like it. I like larger blades than that. But for carrying a fixed blade knife, that's a perfect size. All right, next up, the Kaiser Aggressor. We were talking about that before. Well, Kaiser's doing something pretty cool here in that it is bringing its new Aggressor model to the market in two different uh, variations. The one on top you see here is with um, 154 cm blade steel and a stone wash finish with uh, burlap micarta. And then the one below that's coated 3V blade steel with uh, maroon rich light micarta. So two really great combinations. First of all, let me just say in terms of aesthetics, two great uh, colorways, if you will. Uh, I'm not a, a huge fan of the knife itself. I think it's very, it, it is simple and plain in a way that doesn't resonate with me. Uh, but, but I do respect the simple and plain part and it's nice and sleek. And I bet the way Kaiser makes it, it is incredible. But the fact that you can get a 3V folder uh, in this Kaiser Aggressor for 89 bucks is pretty impressive. Um, for me personally, the only reason I would get that one is for the looks, because uh, frankly, I don't know if I would ever be able to tell the difference between 154 and 3V uh, unless I'm sharpening it. But in terms of, of cutting, uh, with the amount I use and the way I rotate my knives, I'm not sure that that 3V would play into it. Plus, I know 3V to be a a steel known for its toughness. And uh, that to me says blade uh, woodcraft knife. That says chopper. That says uh, large outdoor knife as opposed to small EDC folder. But hey, if you're a, a steel person and you love collecting steels, uh, what a great option uh, Kaiser is giving. And also if you're a hard user of knives, but you can only carry around a, a just sub three inch uh, folder to do your hard work with, uh, yeah, that's pretty. That's a pretty awesome uh, option. All right, so that is from Kaiser, the aggressor. Again, from Armenian custom knife maker Arsen Arsenjan, and he goes by Assassin Knives. So maybe a slight uh, language thing there. All right, next up, Knife Rights starts the Ultimate Steel fundraiser. Okay, we talk about this every year, and it's very exciting to see it happening. And I feel like they just closed it, but that's how fast time is moving these days. Um, so they're starting this up. And uh, again, the way the way the ultimate steel works is that uh, for every for every donation during the ultimate steel, uh, you are oh, each donation is awarded points, basically. And the more um, the more you donate, the more points you get. And that those points go into a drawing of some of the most amazing knives uh, and, and you get to choose also some Brian Fellholter, Steve Gatlin, Jerry Hassam. There are some of the uh, custom knife makers who have already donated their knives. Chris Reeve, Demco, Three Rivers. Um, and then if you are donating in a lower uh, realm, you stand to win either a Spyderco, that one that's up top there, or a SOG, uh, just as a uh, thank you. And uh, I have one from a couple of years ago, a SOG. I always end up giving too late. Uh, and then they're already out of those things. So if you do the early bird, you can really stand to win something fantastic. And if you've ever been to Blade Show, uh, which is coming up, I'm so excited, leaving tomorrow. Uh, but uh, if you've ever been to Blade Show and you go to the Knife Rights uh, booth, you'll see everything that they're giving away. And it's amazing. Uh, people are so generous with them because uh, for the past 15 years, uh, right, since 2006, they have been fighting the good fight and they have gotten laws changed in some 27 plus states i mean they're 27 is an old number at this point um so definitely keep your eyes peeled on that and um and give and another great way you can help the knife rights uh effort is to go to knife works uh where you can buy the um hogue ritter the ritter hogue rsk mark one and mini rsk mark one these are the ritter griptilian so to speak made by hogue now when you buy those knives uh that money helps support doug ritter who is uh the man you know who's not making any money uh killing it with uh changing the knife laws in all the states so uh, buy a knife from him or donate money to uh, knife rights, especially during the ultimate steel, because you stand to, to get some great stuff in return and uh, everyone benefits 
Uh, so again, thank you, Doug Ritter. And speaking of Doug Ritter and knife rights, I just wanted to uh, show uh, the last little item in Knife Life News in Louisiana. We've had a couple of knife stories just like this recently. Um, knife rights supported Louisiana constitutional carry bill HB 131, which includes knives, was passed by the House by a bipartisan vote of 71 to 39. All quote unquote weapons, including knives, are covered by the bill. The bill now moves to the Senate. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, Doug says here, we think the primary sponsor for ensuring this bill covers all weapons includes knives. We work tire tirelessly to persuade legislators that constitutional and permitless carry is just, isn't just is just about firearms or handguns. The Constitution doesn't say firearms. It says arms. Our knives are arms protected by the Second Amendment. Thank you, Doug Ritter. Love it. Uh, so we'll have him back on the show sometime soon. We have him usually uh, on the show once a year or so. And uh, uh, it's always great to catch up with him. And not only is he doing great stuff, but he's just a cool dude. And I love hanging out and talking with him. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at three knives that I might take to Blade Show. I'm flying again this year. Therefore, I'm not taking a bundle of my nice knives. As a matter of fact, I'm taking one. It's going to be a folder and it's getting packed. Um, so you're going to help me figure out which one I, I bring. All right. That's coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So before I get into these three knives uh, that I'm going to choose one to take to Blade Show, I, I just want to show that tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives, we're going to be giving away a knife. I like doing these random knife giveaways. Uh, it's a little different from the, the Gentleman Junkie giveaways. And we are going to be giving away this Migron Acri 2 uh, on uh, Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night. And it is a beauty. I love this thing. This was donated to the channel by Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews. And a funny thing about this knife is that it has been given away twice and, and has gone unclaimed twice. And both times I was like, this is a sign that it belongs in my collection. Uh, but I, I never quite went there. I, I left it in the box and, and thought, you know, uh, I just don't need another knife that I'm not gonna carry. Uh, and the reason I wouldn't carry this is just because I got a lot of other knives that are begging to be carried. Uh, so we're going to give this beauty away. Uh, crowned spine, really nice in the hand, beautifully contoured G10. And the only place I've ever seen gold um, highlights that actually look cool. I think it's uh, I think it's a rare thing. I think gold, even gold jewelry to me tends to look cheap. I don't know why. I've just never been a gold guy. Uh you know, in, in terms of wearing it. And uh, so, but here it looks tuxedo like to me, this looks like a formal wear, like light duty, tactical, heavy duty gentleman's knife front flipper. And uh, okay. So I just wanted to let you know, uh, tune in tomorrow night, 10 PM Eastern standard time. And uh, we'll be giving this away probably around, yeah, probably around 10, 15 or something like that. So come tune in. Uh, Migaron Acri giveaway. All right. Okay. So as I mentioned, flying. So last year I flew to Blade Show and I only brought one knife and I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll bring that one again and it'll be a tradition. Uh, but then I thought I have a lot of other great knives in this realm. And that is inexpensive, really well-made knives that wouldn't break my heart if TSA took them. Of course, it would make me mad, but it wouldn't be uh, irreplaceable or difficult to replace either. Uh, so this is the Kubi Flash, and this is the one that I brought last year. This is my first Kubi, and so I have, I guess, three Kubi knives now, and I like them all, and they're really well done. Um, but this one uh, just really sang to me uh, the design of it, so I purchased it, and uh, 
it is a really great knife four inches uh, that's d2 blade steel and uh I really like their branded pivot. I wish that their branded pivot precluded the branding on the blade, but I love the branded pivot there. I love that it's black. It's like that on all of my, all three of them that I have. And just a great solid knife with great action. 40 bucks, 40 bucks. So if I lose it, I'll buy two more, you know? No, if I, if I lose it, I'll get another one. Uh, it's not a huge deal. And uh, I was inspired by... Dirk Werning in this. Uh, Dirk, if you follow him, he's an awesome dude. And he's got some extremely high-end custom knives. And he likes to post stories on Instagram when he travels. And he doesn't travel with those expensive knives. And he traveled with a Kubi. And I thought, that's a great idea. So anyway. Uh, the Okay, so next up, let's take a look at the, the second one. This is a new one that I showed off last week that I've been carrying quite a bit. This is the Civivi Cinesis in a, a 14C28N blade steel, a beautifully thin, slicey, like high height, flat ground um, clip point blade or Bowie blade. And it has that very sort of Sen cut look or uh, Civivi look with the, with the swoop up right at the crest of the clip and uh, a full bellied blade. So uh, a full bellied blade, but with a slight downward uh, positioning with the tip uh, slightly below center line, which is nice for utility. And then that whole uh, belly there mostly presented against the material. So um, it, th this is a really good long cutter through say cardboard and stuff. I am not going to be doing that at blade show, uh, but it is a stylish and uh, stylish knife, inexpensive and in my, uh, taste realm, you know, so it's a nice kind of knife to carry around. Same thing with this nearly four inches, nearly four inches, Bowie, Warncliffe, two, two of my favorite styles there. Um, and both have a fidget factor, which could be important. Um, you know, uh, but thirdly here, if we're going to talk fidget factor, it's got to be the mad Tonto by uh, Kaiser Knives. I love this thing. Kaiser Knives and Damn Designs. Adrian D'Souza, uh, you can see his uh, design language all over this thing, especially in that broadly shaped handle, the hexagonal pivot, and that beautiful drop point tanto. What a nice uh, tanto that is, because it brings that tip center line so you can use it more like a worn cliff. And then you've got that, uh, you've got full access to using this uh, front portion, which is flat ground, and then this back portion, which is so very thin and slicey, is hollow ground. And then you could just do this all day. So if you need something to cover all the bases, I think all three of these will do it. I'm just not sure which one is going to come with me to Blade Show. First year I went down there, I drove. And uh, so I brought a whole bunch of knives. I'm like, oh, what if I bump into Ernest Emerson? I better have an Emerson. And then, oh, what if I bump it? And so that's how I packed. And uh, so I had like 50 knives, all very expensive. And I toted them around in my backpack. And I'm like, what am I doing? What, you know, am I going to stop someone and say, hi, how you doing? I got your knife in my, so <clears throat> that's, I don't know. First year folly, I guess. So um, with the flight comes one knife because I can only stand to lose one. And it'll be one of these three. I will update you. I know you'll be on tenter hooks the entire time. All right, now I want to talk about some knives that are very cinematic to me that should appear in movies uh, because we oftentimes see a lot of the same things. It's like prop masters don't oftentimes dive in too deep to the knives that are featured uh, in their movies. Um, it's with some um, exceptions, you know, John Wick um, was pretty good. A True Detective was great with knives. Uh, but, you know, a movie like John Wick or John Wick 1, 2, 3, um, they, John Wick has an awesome knife and then everyone else kind of has a, an okay knife or straight up like the karambits that were used in, in, uh, in John Wick 3. Those were uh, century, at the, not century, what are they called? Um, United Cutlery. Uh, they're sort of flashy looking, but anyone who knows knows that, that those, high, those two assassin brothers would have something a little sweeter than that. 
anyway. Okay. So here's the first one here. I want to I want to bring this up. This is not on the list, but this is this is the uh, relative to one that's going to be on the list. And we saw this knife. This is the uh, large Espada cold steel full dress. Uh, we saw this knife in with the older blade, the Expendables. Mickey Rourke had it in his boot. He pulled it out and threw it across the room and buried it deep in a uh, through a dartboard and into the wall. Pretty impressive knife throwing and a very cinematic knife, a great choice for that. And it, I remember thinking that would have been great, a great choice to have as a theme, as like a character knife. Because all these movies, the Expendables included, they have character knives. Like the Rambo knives are characters in and of themselves. So <clears throat> this one would make a good character knife. And I kind of feel that way about all of these. <clears throat> okay, so the first one on the list, if you haven't guessed by now, is the Cold Steel XL Espada. Now this thing at seven and a half inches with a giant handle and all these different ways to grip it. I mean, this is made for the movies. Look, imagine someone coming out here. I'm gonna to go to the main camera here because it's so big. Imagine someone coming out with two of these and holding it like a sword and, and doing having some sort of a fight in a movie with these things. This would be very cool. Uh, this could be a, a, a character knife for sure. Uh, something that uh, a Schwarzenegger type pulls out, you know, to save the day. And and it's frequent. Uh, my wife and I kind of have an unofficial list, but it's frequent in movies that a folding knife saves the day. Often, oftentimes, mostly it's a folding knife. Uh, this is the folding knife to beat the band. So why is it not in any movies? All right. Yes. Yes, I, I will be your prop master, your knife prop master, uh, to all of you Hollywood executives who are watching. Okay, next up is a folder that I could see saving the day, but it's on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, that's something that I thought when I first got this. I was like, this is a mini assassin. This is a mini tactical knife, and that is the Bihai by Microtech. I mean, look at the difference. Very big difference. Okay, so this is a beautiful little knife based on uh, the Palalo, Palulu flower uh, petal. And it is a wicked, that's a that's like a, a way to pretty it up, but it's a wicked, nasty hawkbill blade that you could very easily hide and very easily save the day with. Um, if you could pull this out and cut yourself from restraints, I mean, I'm talking about in movies, of course, or have it like this and take swipes or or <clears throat> have it like this hidden and just, you know, I don't know. Uh, but this little guy could uh, could save a life in a movie. Now, it, what it really reminds me of is that story about I think it was Colonel Rex Applegate, if if I'm not mistaken, who was uh, at, at the time he was doing law enforcement on the U.S. border and was led into the desert to be killed. And he had like a very small pocket knife on him with a sub two inch blade, I believe it was, and was able to um, slash the throat of one of, his, one of his captors with it and gain control of his weapon and gain control of the situation. And I always thought that was cool. Like, you don't need much if you've got, uh, yes, the training, but also the will and the calm and the, you know, um, ever enduring hope that you're going to prevail and knowledge that you're going to prevail. And some, something as small as this could change the tide. So I would love to see this one in a movie also because it's very, very pretty, as is its brother uh, from the bouquet series, The Strelit, all, all designed by Polish maker uh, and designer Ostap Hell. <clears throat> Next up, this would be one that I would want to see in the hands of some cool kind of undercover detective guy uh, in a movie uh, or, or, or some, yeah, he would have to be some sort of uh, hard boiled detective type. Um, and this would be his, his knife carry. And it would kind of also show what a, what a, what a badass he is and how he's going for um, effect and he's going for results. Okay. So this would be the Emerson Elvia. Of course, it would be this one in particular with those beautiful uh, Tom Engelson uh, made um, contoured maroon micarta scales 
and that uh, opener, quick opener on the back. And now I'm forgetting who I bought that from. Uh, but what a cool knife this would be in the hands of someone um, who's, you know, uh, an, an undercover type. I, I keep thinking True Detective because True Detective had some really great knives in it, uh, including an Emerson CQC7 um, used to pry open a window, I believe. Uh, but this one is just so wicked looking and it and it really um, belies the character of the user uh, because that is someone who uses that is willing to go all the way and be an absolute monster because the techniques that you use with that style blade are are horrifying. You know, it's not like, uh, which uh, if you think about it, all knife fighting is, but this is particularly, um, well, nasty. And if you want some idea of uh, of the of the theory behind it. Listen to this week's interview with uh, Ryan Atkinson uh, Fieldworks. He talks a lot about the, the theories behind Libre knife fighting and this kind of Pical style fighting. Uh, so yeah, I, I would love to see this in particular, the Emerson, the folder, you know, Picals are great, but it'd be cool to see a folding Pical. Um, okay. Next up is this, uh, this is the Black Rock Monkey Thumper. This one could be cool in the hands of some sort of martial artist commando, uh, because you have the um, you have the amazing handle. The ring is so good on this, uh, and and again, that's not something that I frequently say, but this it, it keeps your fist aligned, uh, but it also has um, pain compliance uh capabilities with the points there it also allows for a lot of a uh, quick arresting if you're flipping it around whoosh, you can stop it uh at this pinch point here with these flats um also it makes for a great knife without the ring in standard uh position uh standard grip here um so this this would be great in a movie because of its versatility uh the the main character who uses this this could this could easily be a villain's knife actually uh, but could use it in reverse grip, flip it around, do all the impressive stuff. Uh, so that people are, Oh my God, I had a knife. That's, that's amazing. Uh, but also, uh, has the looks, it's a very good looking knife. And then with all of the, yeah, that rock pattern on the blade itself and the double edge, um, it just has a, it just has a great look. And I think it would work best in the hands of a villain. I've just come to that conclusion. Um, yeah. Black Rock Monkey Thumper. Uh, if you like this knife, but don't want to pay the custom bill or have no interest in the custom, you can get this from Fox Knives. They make a version of this uh, Monkey Thumper. Same size, a little little uh, less detailed. In other words, uh, doesn't have the rock pattern on the flats. And I can't remember what the handle's like. Uh, and the blade is all black. And of course, I had to custom, I had to order the, the secondary edge. Uh, so you won't be getting those things on it, but it's a great knife. And, uh, and it's, though it has the ring, it, you could use it without the ring. And that's how I use it. It's a, it's a really nicely shaped handle. Next up. Okay. So again, this is a, uh, this is someone hard boiled, of course. Uh, but this knife to me and probably all arcane designs, uh, very cinematic in look. And I, and that is partially by design. I mean, um, Israel Bacchus of Arcane Designs is really into sci-fi and is really into um, you know futuristic uh, novels and and uh, movies and a lot of that goes into these designs. Like even look at the pocket clip here, you have a something that looks a bit like a um, Tesla coil or something you know making that kind of noise and then just look at the clip look at the uh look at the it looks kind of like a spaceship all faceted and beautiful but the thing about this is that it's double-edged so extra menace it's a double-edged dagger not something most people know exists and i gotta say like maybe most people don't even think about uh so they might not even notice the coolness of having a double-edged folding dagger uh were it to appear in a movie but i know i would and this list is for me and you and folks like us. So don't you agree that the Arcane Designs dagger, I can't really fold it with my left hand very well, would make a great, great, and this is called the antimatter, would make a great movie knife. Uh, slightly futuristic, uh, you know, maybe kind of like a Blade Runner-y uh, or um, maybe not that futuristic, but iRobot, something, 
you know, in the future, but they're still using non-laser blade knives. Uh, this, this would fit right in. All right, so that is the Arcane Designs uh, Antimatter. Next up, another folder. We got a couple more folders, and then and then we get to some big fixies. Uh, right here, this is the Knights Elements. Uh, I think Fox makes this now, but this is the... Oh, yeah, Fox made this then, too, but I think this is now branded under Fox. But this is when it was uh, Elements, Tactical Elements, and uh, Jason Knight, made by Fox. The MK Ultra. Okay, now that we got all those uh, naming conventions out of the way, a beautiful, in my estimation, the best looking and most faithful to the form folding kukri out there is this uh, MK Ultra. Beautiful handle, very comfortable. I love the micarta on this. Of course, it's a titanium frame lock, N690 blade steel, as you might expect from an Italian knife incredibly sharp but that shape look at this i mean this is definitely something a space merc or you know doesn't even have to be space that a mercenary might uh pull out and use and threaten someone with he might even hold it like this in reverse grip up to someone's throat and issue a threat before he walks off and folds it because he's not totally heartless but he needs to make his point yeah that would be this that would be this knife uh this is a great cutter i know it looks um, very tactical because it is very tactical, but this might be one of your best utility knives ever. Uh, you've got the point down at the bottom, you know, way down low. So it's very easy to do draw cuts and utility cuts. You have this incredible recurve here. If you're cutting cord or, or going through cardboard, you have, you know, a full three and a half inches before you need to worry about the curve out. Um, yeah, this would just make a great utility knife. Um, all, all day long in the backyard, uh, pruning stuff. Uh, this would be great for these kind of pull cuts. You get behind the vine, you pull towards you, um, or roses or whatever. So not only a great uh, uh, movie knife, but a great practical knife. But I mean, yeah, I just think the, the shape of it is arresting and unusual, especially to those who are non-knife people, aren't used to that dramatic kukri shape. Um, yeah, this would add a bit of menace. You know, we can, uh, what I'm trying to say is like, we can, we can start veering away from the spider go police. I do love that model. We can start veering away from lots of knives um, and, and start checking out the wide world. All right. And this, this is to you prop masters. Check out the wide world of knives. It's pretty awesome. Like this one, this would be cool in the hands of Arnold or someone large. This is the big drag attack. Uh, say a modern, space viking i keep going to space we don't need to go to space a modern uh, uh i know i know it's a fish out of water story and it's a viking who who finds himself in modern day manhattan and uh, his old sax turns into this folding knife it's kind of a hilarious movie uh but you know it's the viking in manhattan story but he does have a cool sax on him this thing uh has great uh has great uh, visual drama is what I'm trying to get at because it's got that straight sax like blade with the sort of uh, very basic triangular pointy tip, but it's got this really cool curved uh, pistol grip. So depending on how you hold it, it changes the whole shape of how the knife looks. And uh, so I think this one would be a very cool thing that, uh, you know, EDC for Thor or, or someone like that, uh, though I'm not talking the Marvel Thor. I don't talk about Marvel. Um, titanium with this uh, sort of turn lock. Um, what is that called? Ro Roto block, I believe it was uh, called. Very, very cool knife. Uh, I must say, uh, I, I just made a comment about Marvel. Uh, I would not mind to have those six blades embedded in my forearms, though, like uh, Wolverine. Pretty cool. The uh, They have re-released this. They re-released this two years ago. It now has a contoured front scale like the regular Drago tack and has the same sort of milling pattern uh, as opposed to this flat um, peel ply texture. So that is the Bastinelli big Drago tack. All right, next up, a fixie here. We have the Topps Knives Backbite. This one uh, was 
is very cool, very different, very weird, designed by a Russian, I think, Sistema guy or Russian special forces dude. Um, and it's to be used in this pick hall fashion. You've got this like very, very obtuse uh, chisel ground edge here, which, um, you know, it does, it's not totally chisel ground. It has a relief edge on the back. But this, if you were to use this percussively on someone's forearm or something like that, the back of the hand, uh, that would produce a very gaping, wide, nasty gouge, split cut kind of nastiness here. Same thing with this hooking uh, portion on the back. Why in a movie? Because it's unusual and weird looking. It actually looks like a Klingon implement. And it would be cool to see the fight that would ensue from the use of this knife. Uh, say a guy uh, has his knife in standard grip and he's fighting, you know, uh, with a with a with a dagger in forward grip. And then his opponent, uh, maybe it's the hero, maybe it's the bad guy, has this in reverse grip. Like, how cool would that knife fight scene look? Because this is going to have trapping. This is going to have Pical style uh, thrusting. This is going to have use of that forward scoop. It's going to make for some very, very interesting uh, fighting, especially against a another um knife but in in a different style of fighting so yep this is cool this is the back bite uh this was donated to the channel by uh dave this old sword blade reviews um yeah very cool knife all right next up this is a good one i don't know exactly who would carry this uh but but it's the pinkerton knives uh, cave bear. Sorry about that. A little brain lock there. Uh, this is a double-edged nitro V perfectly ground by hand. He, uh, Dirk Pinkerton is amazing at grinding a knife. He's not just amazing at designing production knives, but man, his, his custom work is incredible, but look at how cool this knife is. Um, it is truly a claw and it's got that upward, uh, extending point so that when you're punching or hitting you don't have to alter your wrist to get the point right where it needs to go you got two edges if you hold it like this it looks a bit like a middle eastern um what like a shortened jambaya i think it is um but when you turn it like this it's pakal all day long uh forward and backward again this double-edged pakal style would make for an incredible fight because uh, well, first of all, Libre fighting and Pical style fighting is very cool and very fast, uh, but a lot of it doesn't account for a sharpened front edge. So that would incorporate that would incorporate some of the more, uh, I don't know, some other sort of Filipino style um, uh, reverse grip fighting. So you you add that to the Pical style sort of Libre style, you would have a very cool fight uh, with that handle. I don't know. It's a happy person because I love this happy micarta, that orange and red. It's so I, I always think kind of of Ronald McDonald. It's very cheery. And then you have that menacing black double edged uh, claw there. It's a good contrast. So maybe someone like who's who's the one with the baseball bat? Who's the female superhero with the baseball bat? She might she might benefit from a knife like that. All right, three more grand fixies to bring it on home. This one, gift from my brother. I don't know how well it's going to fit under the under the knife cam. This is the the Cold Steel Chaos Kukri. All right, so the Chaos series. Ah, oh, look at that, it fits. The Chaos series, I'm just going to put this down. All have this same handle. So uh, Cold Steel makes the, the Chaos series in a Tonto blade in a double-edged dagger blade, in a large clip point blade, and then here, the Kukri blade. And uh, this is my one and only Cold Steel Kukri, and I I love this thing. And, and, you know, it's obvious why this would make a great movie knife. You've got the knuckle, the knuckle duster here. Um, imagine uh, a large, uh, you know, bad guy. This would definitely be a large bad guy's knife. And there would be plenty of scenes. And the first one, people would laugh, but where, where he would pull this knife out and scare the crap out of here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over here, pull this knife out, scare the crap out of the person he's going to assail. Boom. But then he would punch him in the face and just knock him out. Uh, but this, this aluminum uh, 
knuckle bow is a crusher. It is so nasty. I mean, it's really, really stout and strong. And then it has this big nut on the end, also pointed, uh, very much like the nut on the the nut on the tip of that uh, 1918 trench dagger. Just this thing is built for chaos, as it says. But I think personally, um, besides the double-edged dagger, I think that this kukri is makes the most sense. The kukri blade with this, with this handle. It would also take a large bad guy or a large person to wield this for uh, long periods of time because that cast aluminum handle is heavy. You know, the blade is very forward heavy. So uh, after a while, you might you might need some relief. All right, so that is the Cold Steel Chaos Kukri, you know, basically made for the movies, designed for the movies. Whoops. Anyone remember Cobra? Sylvester Stallone Cobra, that Cobra knife? That was very cool. All right, second to last knife here. This is low-hanging fruit. This is the Predator Hunter, the Work Tough Gear Puzan Predator Hunter. Now, you might say, Bob, that's already appeared in a movie. And I would say meta of you. I sort of agree. Uh, so this is the Work Tough Gear uh, Puzan uh, that is based at uh, the Puzan Bowie that is based on the Predator knife. And we all know what I'm talking about uh, when I say the Predator knife. But if you need a, a reminder here, if you need a reminder, imagine I'm a, a large Native American man. Oh, does that ring a bell? The Billy knife. They all have it in the squad in uh, in Predator. They all have this knife. You don't see them all use it, but if you look carefully, you can see it strapped to, strapped to Arnie's leg. He uses it in the beginning when he when he snaps the when he cuts the uh, drive belt of that truck that he sends careening into the enemy camp. And uh, of course, Billy uses it to to let blood out of his chest to um, call in the predator for a hand to hand fight. Ill advised, I'd say. Um, and but everyone else has one, too. And uh, and then they all have the cool survival knife. Um, and, and I like that if I if I were Dutch and I had my own uh, special forces outfit that went and hunted aliens and terrorists, a la the 1980s classic, I would do the same thing. I would say, you can all be in my crew. Uh, you're welcome. I love all of your uh, particular skills. Um, and, and I really respect your individuality. And yes, you can use your minigun. And, and yes, you're a good radio guy. And you can carry that uh, revolving explosive grenade launcher. But you all have to carry these two knives. I don't care if you carry other knives too. But you're all carrying these two incredibly kick-ass knives. That's how I would run it too. So the Puzan Predator Hunter, this really does want to be in a movie. And I, I say, why not in one of the many reboots? I'm sure they'll make another Predator movie at some point. Why not put this in there? That would be awesome. It would be a nice, I don't know, uh, a circling, you know, a tying, tying the knot, tying of the bow, tying off loose ends. What am I saying? I just think it'd be a cool wraparound. All right, Puzan Predator Hunter. Plus, it's incredibly big and cinematic. It, it looks good, right? That's what it, this all comes down to. Looks good. All right, last up. I want to see this one in a cowboy movie. I want to see this on like a slick riverboat gambler who um, cheats at cards, but is charming. And the ladies love him and the guys all want to be him. You know, this guy. And uh, he's he's also got a push dagger in the cummerbund. Um, but he gets called to duels frequently, and he always calls knives. We're going to duel with knives, and this is what he brings. Yes, uh, this is the Hogtooth Subhilt Fighter. This is a knife you've seen many times at this point on this channel. Uh, this was my 50th birthday knife. And first of all, look at the beautiful sheath work that uh, uh, that Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives does. Beautiful corseted work here um but i'm going to remove this from the leather and show off this gorgeous knife so this is this is the riverboat gambler's sub hilt fighter this is what he would have beautiful stag handle um from some animal that he shot and then he he gave it to the blacksmith who and he had this knife developed after years of fighting and uh, winning and uh, so he wanted to add a little flourish to it and and put a couple of his own uh 
things into it, like like the sub hilt. That trigger is so good. It acts like a trigger. You can manipulate uh, kind of like a drumstick or um, like this. But also, when it's lodged between the ribs of your enemy and you want to pull it out, this helps. So that's what this, that's the movie I want to see this in. Um, and it would be a character uh, knife for sure. This would be like the Rambo knife of this um, popular cowboy type character. But it would be rated R. So you have that. All right. So this is it. This is this is the culminating knife in this list, I believe, because it is the most cinematic of my knives uh, with the pattern. Well, Damascus with the stag, with the sub hilt, with the the length and the double edge. To me, this is the most. Um, mm, 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 mm. All right. Well, that's been my list of knives that I would like to see in the movies. Let me know uh, down below what you think. I know that there are a lot of knives out there, unique, cool ones like Gus Ciccini folders should be in movies for some reason, like in some kind of capacity, um, you know, uh, Strider. I'd love to see uh, some of our favorite tactical knives. Like it'd be cool to see a hinderer in a movie. You never see hinderers in movies. Uh, so let me know down below what you think would be cool. And, uh, and then join us on Sunday for another interview. And of course, tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be giving away this Miguron Acri. And uh, one of you will walk away with this beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, if you want to become a patron, help support the show, you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code on your screen. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.